So in this first problem, it asks us to classify the functions as odd, even, or neither. So remember that for even functions, these are symmetric um, over the y-axis, meaning if we reflect over the y-axis, it will land on itself. And for odd functions, if we reflect over the x and the y, so reflect over one and then the other, then it'll land on itself. That's an odd function. And then if neither of those happen, then it would be neither. So for this first one, okay, if we take this, you can see that this one um, looks like you could reflect it over the y-axis, right? So reflect it left to right. I'm just also going to show you that. So if I flip it over the y-axis, lands on itself. So this one is even. This next one, if I get that drawn on, and then for this one, I'm going to draw um, a point to match up to. So I'm going to draw a point right here. So now if I take and um, reflect this one, so I'll reflect this over the um, y-axis first to see if it's even, and we can see that it's not. It didn't land on itself. So now I'll reflect it um, over the x-axis and see if it lands on itself, and it does. So this one we reflected over both x and y, and it landed on itself, so this one is odd. Next one, if I get some of these pieces drawn on here. So if we take these and we um, reflect these, let me actually get a point on here to match up just to make sure. So I'm going to put this one on here. Um, for when I reflect it over the y-axis. So let's flip this um, over the y-axis, definitely doesn't land on itself. Um, and then I'm going to draw a point on the x-axis to match back up when I reflect over the x to check if it's odd. So now if we reflect um, over the x-axis, still doesn't land on itself, um, ends up below itself. So this one is neither. And then this final one, if we look at this one, um, oops, let me fix that. So if we look at this one, we can tell when we reflect it over the y-axis, it's not going to land on itself because there's no graph over here. Um, so let's do it anyways, because then we're going to flip it over the x-axis. So now we'll reflect over the x-axis and see that it does um, land on itself. So reflecting over x and y lands on itself. So this one is odd. For number two, we have a table that shows the values of an even function. So now when we're actually talking about the values, remember that an even function, um, the values of opposite inputs, okay, of opposite inputs give back the same output. And I guess I could put um, a different letter here. Um, but opposite inputs give back opposite outputs. And so when we're looking in this function, um, when we look at opposite inputs, they should give back the exact same number. So here is one and negative one. Opposite inputs give back the same output. So this is going to match this one. So these two are going to match. Um, if we look at, so we need two. We need the output for two, right? So we'll look at the output for negative two. They're going to be the same. So this is going to be eight. Um, looking for negative three. So the output for negative three is going to be the same as the output for three. So zero. And then finally, negative four and four will have the same output. So this one's going to have an output of two. All right. Then in number three, it says here's the graph of y equals x minus two. Is there a vertical translation of the graph that would represent an even function? 
And remember, an even function is going to need to flip over the y-axis. So it's going to need to reflect over the y-axis and land on itself. So is there a vertical translation of this function, okay, of this line? Could we move it up and down anywhere that would flip it over on itself, flipping over that orange line? And that's just not going to happen because there's not anything over here to get us that graph. Also, if we reflect over, anytime we flip this over the y-axis, so if I were to flip this one, that's going to be a negative slope. So our original function has a positive slope. If we reflect it over the um, y-axis, that's going to have a negative slope. So if I take this function and I reflect it, that's going to have a negative slope. So those two can never be the same. So no, this is not possible. And then is there a um, vertical translation um, that would represent an odd function? Explain your reasoning. Um, and so, yeah, we could get an odd one because if I put it here, so if I have this as my function, so now if I flip this one over the y-axis, Okay, it becomes here. And then if I flip it over the X axis, it lands back on itself. So as long as it goes through that origin, so this one um, would be yes, a shift or a translation up to units would get us one that's odd. All right, number four gives us F as an odd function and asks us to come up with true statements. So here they're talking about um, opposite inputs, okay, because they're putting in 5 and negative 5 to these. So remember for odd functions, when we put in odd, or sorry, opposite inputs, we get back opposite outputs, okay? So opposite ins equal opposite outs, okay? And I remember that because of O for opposite and odd. So opposite inputs, opposite outputs. So when I put opposites in, I should get opposites back. So A is incorrect. B, I have opposites in. I also have opposites out. So this one is good. C, is, C and D are talking about reflections of the graph. And we know that for odd functions, it's a reflection over both axes. So not just the y-axis, but both the x and the y. Um, and then on an odd function, f of 0 would equal 0. So this is true in a lot of cases for odd functions, but it doesn't have to be true in all cases. So if we looked at one um, like this, so this function is actually odd, um, but doesn't go through the point 0, 0. Because, right, if I reflect this, over the y-axis, if we just kind of look at this branch, if I reflect it over the y-axis, it'll look like this. And then if I reflect it over the x, it'll land back on itself. And that doesn't go through the point 0, 0. So that doesn't have to be true, even though it's true in a lot of cases. Number five, find the exact solution to each of these equations or explain why there is no solution. So let's take and multiply both sides by 4 here. So we get the cube root of D is equal to 60. And then the opposite of cube rooting is cubing. So D is equal to 60 cubed, um, which is 216,000. Part B. So we have a negative out front here. So I'm just going to divide both sides are multiplied by a negative 1 to both sides. So negative times a negative is a positive. So we get cube root of E is equal to negative 7. And then the opposite of cubing of cube rooting is cubing. So we get E equals negative 7 to the third. Um, and negative 7 to the third power is negative 343. Part C, we'll subtract 2 from both sides so we can isolate that root. So we get the cube root of F minus 5 is equal to 2. So now we want to deal with this root. So F minus 5 
would equal two cubed since the opposite of a cube root is cubing. And then the um, two to the third is eight. So then we'd be able to add five to both sides and we would get F equals 13. Number six gives us the graph of F and then it asks us to do a couple things. So first it says graph um, the function G given that G of X equals the opposite of F of X. So that's gonna be the opposite output. So G of X is always gonna be the opposite output of F of X. Um, and so at zero, zero, it would be the same. One, it's gonna be negative one. Okay, at four, it's gonna be the opposite of two. So four, negative two. And then at nine, it's gonna be the opposite of three or negative three. So then this is going to be G of X. Then for part B, it asks us to um, graph H, which is going to have the opposite input. So the outputs are gonna be the same at opposite inputs. So at, um, they're going to be one, so it's going to be one, but at negative one. So negative one is going to kick back one. Zero is going to kick back zero. Negative one is going to kick back one. So instead of four, two, it's going to be negative four to give us back two. And instead of nine, three, it's going to be negative nine giving us back three. So this one, um, this is going to be H of X. Then number seven, the graph models Priya's heart rate before and before, during, and after a workout. What was Priya's approximate heart rate before and after the run? So if we just look at these kind of flat lines before and after, and then we look over to the y-axis, so it's going to be, you know, a little bit over 75, so maybe like 78 beats per minute about how high did her heart rate go. So if we look at the top here, so the top heart rate looks like it's about 150 um, beats per minute. Then they want us to sketch what the graph would look like um, if Priya started her run um, three hours later. So instead of starting here, she started it three hours later. And so this is just gonna be to um, move this graph three hours later. So then it's kind of starting, this one is starting at about 1.5. So this one should be starting at 4.5 and then have do the same thing just three hours later or shifted to the right um, three, three units. <laughs> 